Welcome to this video series for people who are new to Postman. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can run a collection in Postman. So first let's start with what do I mean run a collection? So far we have went through each and every request in order to test our simple workflow. But wouldn't it be great to have like the possibility of running the entire collection all at once without our manual intervention? And so far we have done everything that is possible in order to reduce the amount of manual work that we need to do. We have written tests that make sure that our requests work as they should work. We have used variables in order to dynamically create custom requests and pass information from one request to the other. So we have all the bits and pieces in place in order to make it happen. Now the last and final step that we need to do is to go over the collection and expanding the menu offers us the possibility of running the collection. And this will open a completely new window presenting you with a collection runner. The collection runner is a very simple tool that allows us to automatically run our collection. And as you see, we already have the collection selected. We have the environment selected that we want to use. And we can click here on run GitHub API. Now with only one click, I managed to go over the entire collection, create a repository, create an issue, delete a repository, and test again if the repository was properly deleted. And by following and by executing the test that we have in our request, we are now sure that everything actually worked fine. By default, the order in which the request will be executed is the same as the order we have saved the request in the collection. And the first one is the create repository, create issue, delete repository, and get deleted repository. For whatever reason, if we decide that this order doesn't fit us, we can change it here before running the collection. So for example, now we will first get the repository and then delete it. And of course, this will not work as we expect, but that's absolutely not a problem for us. If for whatever reason something fails or produces unexpected results, you can simply click on the respective request name and you will be given additional information like what is the request URL that has been called in this case or how did the request body look like? In this case, we don't have a request body because it's a GET request. How was the response body? What exactly happened there? We actually expected that the repository was deleted, but we got back to repository. And this makes it easier for you to inspect and understand when you're running the entire collection as a workflow, what has gone wrong. So I'm gonna put back the get after the delete as we have originally intended this. One common problem that you may be facing is that you don't have an environment selected. And when you don't have an environment selected and you try running the collection then everything will fail. And then you will not understand exactly what has happened. If this is the case, if you cannot figure it out instantly, all you have to do is to look at a request that you have generated. And for example, if you look at a request headers, you will be able to tell that, for example, the authorization header doesn't really contain the token that the application actually needs in order to run. So for that reason, the GitHub API doesn't get this token, doesn't know who you are, and gives you back a 401 unauthorized status code. And this is a common problem that may occur, so always make sure that the environment that you want to use is selected. Now, if you have a collection that you can run using the collection runner, it means that you can create automatic test scenarios. And you can go further and do continuous integration and deployment pipelines and integrate Postman into your deployment process in order to make sure that the API works the way you expect. I hope you have managed to run your own collection and if you have any issues and cannot get this to work, Make sure you take a look at the video description for some troubleshooting ideas or feel free to post a comment in the section below. Thank you for watching this introduction to Postman and hopefully you have now all the bits and pieces in order to work on your own APIs.